What's good, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the What's Good Games podcast, your source for video game news, commentary, analysis, and funny stuff every Friday. I'm one of your hosts, Brittany Brombacher, alongside the summer breezy, beautiful Christine Steimer. Hello. It's funny because when you said, like, I'm one of your hosts, I kept in my brain it was auto filling Andrea, who is out this week. She is out this week because we're getting air conditioning installed in the studio. Yeah. Yeah. So that bitch had to get torn down. Uh, the studio, not Andrea. <laughs> so, right. Yeah. <laughs> Let me clarify. <laughs> so yeah, that's gonna be a very, very lovely addition because what that means is that when we're all in the studio, we don't need to have a fan blowing on us during those really hot days. And when someone eats meat, they get the meat burps, and then the fan blows the meat burps in our faces, and it's really gross. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I think you were the one who got the shit for that, but it was actually Andrea that was. Yeah, I usually yeah. do take black for burps. Yeah, but it's always just Andrea with her meat burps. Anyway, hi, hello, friends, and welcome to the shit show. This is a Steinbacher show, so it's going to be one full of weirdness and randomness and random tangents and probably some talk of banging and boinking, because that's what we do here on the Steinbacher show. A few yeah. announcements is this Friday, May 15th, if you're catching the show right when it releases at the butt crack of dawn, we are going to be on Gary Wood's Animal Talking. It's going to be a really fun little talk show that takes place in Animal Crossing, and you can watch that at twitch.tv slash Gary Witta, and that is G-A-R-Y-W-H-I-T-T-A. If you don't catch it live, I'm sure you can catch it on his Twitch channel or his YouTube channel. Uh, that's what we do as content creators. We archive all of our stuff. And then this Saturday, the 16th of May, from 12 to 6 p.m. at twitch.tv slash what's good games. It is our three year anniversary. I know. It's crazy. Oh my God. Three years. Samra was bragging to me that she gets strawberry margaritas. I do get strawberry margaritas during the stream. I'm excited about it. You get to go to the studio, and I'm very jealous. But yes. I will be here festering. Actually, it's not supposed to be hot this weekend in Washington, so I'll be fine. I'll probably be wearing a sweatshirt. So it is supposed to be hot this week weekend in LA, and so I'm glad to be able to go to air conditioning because oh, I don't yeah. have air conditioning in this house. No, but you'll be nice and cool as a cucumber in the studio. But it's going to be a good time. We have some fun throwback videos. We have I just watched the new one that we're going to be debuting of our sizzle reel of this year. Oh my god, it's really funny. We've had some really good times this past year. There's me some gameplay. I'm doing some Microsoft Paint stuff, which I know is the star attraction of the show. I know that's the only reason everyone wants to tune in is so they can watch me draw on Microsoft Paint. Steimer included. She would quit What's Good Games if it wasn't for my art. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, see, usually she doesn't deny it. Thank you. Thank you. How both. could I? You, well, you can't. It's the truth. And then that next Sunday from 10 to 11 a.m. is our happy hour Q&A live stream, which is our Patreon exclusive streams. And so if you decide to join our Patreon that Saturday of our anniversary stream, you can join us on Sunday for more shenanigans. We'll probably be very hungover. But I mean, I hope I hope not, but it's a possibility. Yeah, especially with the shenanigans going on on Saturday. But it's okay. It's just hashtag content. Good content. Hungover content is good content. Actually, I don't think that's true. Yeah, usually not. Usually the not. content is the good content. Yeah, yeah. Then, and then you want to take the next day off. Well, not not here at What's Good Games, man. We hustle. And then hey. from 11.30 to 12.30 p.m. is going to be our after-hour stream, and that is where we play games with our patrons, or sometimes we just play games by ourselves, and patrons watch us. It's just the way the world works, you know? You know, Steimer? You know what I'm saying? I do. I do indeed. All right. And then today, Steimer, we have a drinking game because mm. we are going to be talking a lot about Ghost of Tsushima. Tsushima. There <laughs> Tsushima. we go. Tsushima. Yeah. And I know I'm going to fuck up at some point and I'm going to say ghosts, plural. And I'm going to call yes. it Tsushima or Tsushima. Yes. So every time I do that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be taking a drink from this rather hefty pour of whiskey that I have here for myself. Um, and if that, you wanna... is a, that is a rather large pour. I just kept pouring, and then I realized, oh, no, the bottle's gone. So, <laughs> whoops. <laughs> I see a little bit left in there. Pour that shit in. <laughs> Fine. Da oh, I like it when she talks to me that way. Dang. Uh, so if you want to play along at home, <laughs> there you go. If you don't want to drink, you can just use this as a hydration exercise yes. to also help you. You don't need to necessarily drink alcohol if you are, wa you know, watching this or listening to no, this. No, not at all. Really early or whatever. But yeah, 
Go ahead and take a drink of water or take a drink of alcohol. I promise every time we mess this up. You're either gonna get really drunk or really hydrated. Yep. There you There's go. There's only two outcomes. And both of them aren't that bad. Okay. Sure. All right, so we want to thank this month's Patreon producers, Chewie's Godson, Alex Rogopoulos, Ferris Ate, Mohammed Mohammed, Marcus Brown, Punk to Five, and Molly Bittner. And Simer, we have some new folks to our Patreon community. Would you like to read their names? Sure. So welcome, everybody. So we got Cody Becker, DK2112, Matthew Bruner, <laughs> Elizabeth Douglas, uh, Adam Hokum, Alex Kreps. Ooh, that one, now I want Kreps. Uh, Nick Trico, <laughs> Frankie Rough Knight, Kale Dolphincorn, amazing Ooh, last name. It is. Desmond Johnson, Captain Redbeard86, Franco Kwan, aka F Fiber Bunny, mm -hmm. and Jenny Yellow. Jenny Yellow, which makes me want Jello. So we want Kreps and Jello. Is it Kreps mm -hmm. or Crepes? Crepes? Crepes. Eh, okay. Crepes. But it made me think of it. That's fair. And Jenny Yellow made me think of Jello, so we're on the same page. And we have new podcast reviewers. So last week, we got one podcast reviewer uh, from Logan, a.k.a. Pancakes, I believe was the correct name. Very, very sweet message. But I put a call out there, Simer, because I said, hey, man, it helps us out. You got a few minutes or even 30 seconds. Just write us a little five-star review. It really does help the show out. And boy, oh, boy, a lot of y'all showed up. And I said, if we get, I think it was 12, I'll do a somersault. Um, so I guess. Are you doing a somersault? I, I, I mean, not at this moment. But <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, no. I just mean, did we hit the? Threshold? I think yes. I think we did. I think there's twelve here. Let me let me count. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve exactly. <gasps> oh, so shit! I was nervous. I thought maybe we'd be one shy. <laughs> the suspense. So I need to find a very safe padded area to do a little somersault here. Because I'm an old woman, Simer, my bones ache, and they just don't bend like they used to. So I have to make sure I don't... I mean, the somersault's one of the easier gymnastic moves you could do. I know. I just haven't done one in, like, 50 years. Even though I'm only 31. It's been, old. It's been mean, a minute. But I am it's a... It's been 84 years. <laughs> but I'm a woman of my word, so I will get that somersault video out there. So thank you to everyone who showed up and left us a review. Like, yeah, Boy Wilson is back. This person also left us a review, also titled It's Fine. But this time, they filled in a little bit more content context said many platforms offer the same content but these ladies actually have a complete show every week need to add rihanna's photo to the cast on apple i agree and thank you again your boy wilson we got wasky one yeah who says i think i really like this podcast great rampage 447 f gram 23 who says jeff is the best and needs more jeff oh glory who says brit i believe in your somersault, somersault capabilities darker q Fat Kid 56698454. Flying Cosmo. Jedi Master 1738, who just said Somersault. Shells AK. Teal and Allen 18 Slick Rick. So thank you all very, very much. Do you appreciate it? I'll uh, make sure I get in that gymnastic action for you. Maybe I can say, how about this time? We get, if we get another 20, next time we get 20, I'll try a cartwheel. Yeah, the cartwheel is going to be harder oh, it's, on your it's terrible. little wristy poos, so you it's... better train for that. Okay, like, no, we got to set expectations. I cannot do a cartwheel. I will never be able to do a cartwheel. What I am You could capable... maybe do, like, a, what is it called, a round-off? Or, like, a, like, they're, like, bullshit cartwheels? I mean, I definitely can do a bullshit cartwheel. I don't even know what if I what I can do can be classified as a bullshit cartwheel. Because it's literally, like, I'll put my hand on the ground after bending my knees a lot because I can't even touch my toes. And then I'll kind of, like, kick my feet up in the air. <laughs> yeah I don't, I don't know <laughs> she's so disappointed in me uh all right well before we get into this week's news we want to say thank you to our sponsor me undies so steimer it's time mm -hmm. for summertime dreaming these mm -hmm. are the days when visions of sunshine steimer and surf dance through our heads probably now more than ever as we collectively mold into our couches but we got to keep the dream alive MeUndies is committed to the cause by keeping you in a constant stream of un un uninterrupted, dream-inducing undie comfort. So I've been wearing nothing but pajamas, essentially, since this whole stay-at-home order has occurred uh, in March, I believe it was. And it's been my MeUndies that have been like, all right, do I wear jeans today or do I wear MeUndies bottoms? Well, obviously I'm going to wear some MeUndies bottoms. Yeah, I think that's the correct choice. Absolutely. Always. Like, honestly, because you work from home. So, like, even yeah. before this happened, you should have only been wearing 
comfy pants. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I put jeans on once since all this started, and I was like, okay, well, first of all, I need to lay off the cookies and chew. I'm just going to wear my stretchy MeUndies pants because they're comfortable and they don't remind me about the few pounds I may or may not have gained during this stay at home because I like this and I've been melting into my couch. It's just kind of what you do. I can't help it. I'm sorry. So anyway, MeUndies are like the best little buddy for your quarantine needs right now because you're just sitting on your butt and you're comfortable and it's great. And everyone needs to be comfortable right now. So how do you reach this uninterrupted state of comfort, you ask, Steimer? Well, with a membership for MeUndies, and man, is it handy. Imagine this. Every month, the softest, coziest undies magically appear at your door. As your undie collection grows, your laundry time lessens, and adulting gets that much easier. Plus, a membership comes with site-wide savings, early access, and free shipping. Oh, and zero reasons to ever leave your house. Just grab those new undies off the porch and get right back onto that summertime dreaming, or if you're like me, sit on your couch or in your computer chair. So MeUndies are made from micromodal and irresistibly soft, sustainable fabric that encases your nether regions in a cloud of comforts. It's magically made from trees, another reason to give them a hug. MeUndies are offered in a range of sizes from extra small to 4XL. So MeUndies has a great offer for our WGG listeners. For any first-time purchasers, you get 15% off and free shipping. You got to give this super softness a try, especially because they have 100% satisfaction guarantee. So to get 50% off of your first order, free shipping, and 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash WGG. Steimer, that's MeUndies.com slash WGG. I'm wearing my MeUndies again right now. I wasn't going to say that I'm wearing my Star Wars pants again because I feel like I'm always wearing those during the show and I don't want people to think I wear the same thing over and over again, but who cares? Go for it. I'm wearing, oh, pizza. I'm wearing pizza underwear. Oh, perfect. From them. Hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, girl. We got a lot of so I've dubbed this section PlayStation Power Hour. Nice. Throw some confetti. Cause we have this okay, so we should we should back up here. This is how we're gonna do this. Okay. Okay. You let me know. I'm gonna let you know right now. So this first section is gonna be all PlayStation news. The second section is gonna be non PlayStation news because between trying to get ready for the anniversary stream and everything else, there just hasn't been a lot of time to actually play video games. So we uh, are going to break the show up into two new sections. Got it, girl? I do got it. Okay. So commence yeah. the PlayStation Power Hour. Take a shot. Just kidding. Don't, you don't need to. Oh, no. What'd but, I do? No, no, you didn't. Oh. Uh, just because Power Hour is usually oh. a drinking game. I thought I, I thought I said ghost or the thing no, again. No, you, you didn't. You didn't. <sighs> can't, can't You're okay me like so that. far. Can't I'm confuse sorry. me like that. Okay. Sorry. It's okay. Do you want to take this one? Sure. Okay. Although now I'm scared that I'm going to mess it up. No, you mess it up, <laughs> and I gotta take. A, I gotta take a drink. Yeah. Um. So apparently, you just put this as the headline, which is not really a headline, but that's okay. So what happened today was PlayStation had their state of play on Ghost of Tsushima, mm -hmm. uh, and I think I said that correctly. And if I, I didn't, did. I'm very sorry. But so the game, if you are unfamiliar, is set on Tsushima Island in 12. 74. Uh, the game revolves around one of the last samurai, Jin Sakai, during the first Mongol invasion of Japan. The Mongol Empire, empire has conquered and devastated many countries, and Tsushima... <laughs> <laughs> I like have to like pause and like, how do I pronounce this? Uh, it's the final obstacle between the mainland of Japan and the huge Mongol invasion fleet. Jin is one of the few survivors of his clan. His world is shattered and he faces a difficult decision to continue fighting the way he was trained or use unconventional means. He is resolved to do whatever it takes to liberate Tsushima. Jin will have to master a new fighting style, the way of the ghost, to defeat the Mongol Empire and fight for the freedom and independence of Japan. Okay. So they had, um, over the, the course of this roughly 20 minutes that they had on the state of play, they covered multiple topics um, that we'll go over individually. I'll list them all for you here right now, and then we'll dive deeper into each. So they, they covered exploration. They covered combat, which is two styles, samurai and ghost. Um, there was custom character customization, photo mode, um, the fact that there's a really awesome Japanese soundtrack, or not soundtrack, voice track is what I meant to say, uh, and then samurai cinema mode. So, Brittany, let's start with exploration. exploration. Okay, so I'm just going to briefly run down the demo, and that, kind of like the high points of what we saw. So the opening, like Samurai said, is all about exploration, and I just got to take a second and give a high praise to that beautiful cloth that was flapping in that wind. 
Yeah, he had like a poncho style thing on, a nice, a nice drapey oh. behind him. It was, uh, it was really pretty. Oh man, the way it moved, wind. the way it moved. I was like, oh god, if I were a dancer, I'd want dance moves like that. That would be weird. <laughs> uh, be very spazzy, but it'd be okay. Yeah, that. <laughs> I'd be like one of those inflatable like things yeah, it's, that you see. <laughs> it's, like, it's in the car lot. Yeah. It's like, woo, come on in. It's twelve ninety nine. <laughs> come on in. So the first thing we saw of note was the guiding wind. So the character, Jin, well, the map opens and what you can do is select where you want to go. And there's no HUD that I could see anyway while this gameplay was being shown. And so what the guiding wind was is it was kind of like your oh your pathfinding right so what you could do is push something on the d-pad and it would show you where to go you would f you would follow the guiding wind simer was the idea of it i thought that was really good and clever i really liked that and i also got major like disney pocahontas vibes from the entire ah. exploration seg seg bleh, segment uh because of the guiding wind and i was like yeah it seems like some some fairy tale shit i'm gonna do it oh yeah uh, yeah, so basically instead of like a compass or one of those really jarring big red lines like go this way, uh, instead the game has opted to do something that feels perhaps a little bit more organic. I mean, not organic in the sense that you cannot realistically call upon the wind and have it guide you, but wouldn't it be cool if you could? Uh, yeah, I think you need yeah. to reach out to Sucker Punch and be like, listen. How do I get me some guiding wind? Give me some guiding wind. <laughs> Sounds a little. Or I'll give you some guiding you know, wind. All you need is some just beans. Just eat a lot of meat. Yeah, yeah that beans and meat. We're on the same page here. Yep. All right. So then you see Jin traveling, and at this point, I got a lot of Witcher vibes, just because of. I mean, that's Witch what I said. Too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So no, it wasn't I just me. I got Witcher vibes. Yeah. So you're waking your way on on horsey back, and around you, there's stuff going on. You see animals roaming around. You see animals attacking and killing people all around you. And Jin's like, "Fuck all this. I got a destination," and he just like runs all right past them. And then at that point, he gets to Yagata Farmstead. And what's interesting here is he opens up his map, and it shows on the left that if you do the quest that's here, you get a reward, which is minor legend increase and plus 12 iron. And then on the right side of the UI was a little, oh, I don't know, just like a little, like, decal or art. And it was showing, I think it's like the reputation system, right? It was show, it called the Legend of the Ghost. And I think the more tasks you do, obviously, that increases your abilities to do whatever it is. But the point of that is, I don't know. But it looked like an optional side quest that he was doing at that point. And then at that point, it showed that birds will lead Jin, to, lead Jin to points of interest, such as hidden locations. And in this case, the bird led Jin to a dude talking about vengeful spirits, which is always what birds do. They lead you to people talking about, about vengeful spirits. And then right yep. past that was a little shack where he went in, and, went in and looted some resources. I think it was linen and something else and then from it there just, it was linen and supplies just okay generally. yeah and then from there he came across a little fox a fox friend i was so scared okay so yeah like the whole time you as he's running by you, you see like a boar attacking some dudes so then when you see the fox in the woods i was like no please don't hurt don't it hurt and then yeah and then it, it's not that all all the foxes are your friends they are amazing. Yeah, they lead you to shrines, and then the more shrines you pay respect to, it opens up more charm slots, uh, and that's cool. What I thought was funny, though, is the fox led him to a shrine, and then there was just, like, a decapitated person laying right in front of yeah, the shrine. Yeah, I also was like, Did, uh, should we check that out? There's, there's a thing going <laughs> are on. We, are we concerned <laughs> about this at all? We're not? We're just, okay. We're just going to leave this poor person alone, yeah. and this is kind of where, again, I get those those Witcher vibes, and I think this is into Red Dead Redemption obviously to some extent but i think more of the witcher where and this is why i talked about my like the game i would create if i could i love that there's always something going on it seems like there's always a story to tell because if you look where the person's head was lol there was blood obviously and there was a trail of it leading away so like what would happen if you had followed it and it kind of I mean, you might find a head or yeah. you might find the people who have it yeah and this all kind of comes down to you what they want to you know where i think really push home is that this is an open world game and there is a lot to see and explore and then at that point, it cut to this montage of, like, different areas and things that you could find. And I thought... Yeah, I that... thought it was interesting because it obviously has the main side quest, the main main quest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Such technical terms there. <laughs> and then um, the main story quest is probably what I was going for. And then it has a whole bunch of other little ways for the world to kind of entice your interest and draw you there. So they were also talking about smokestacks, which you can see. The draw distance was really great oh. on the demo. Um, you could see 
for miles away looked um and there's you know, there are like there's things burning or there's whatever and you're like oh what's what's going on this over is, there i'll check that out and then while you're on horseback you can still collect resources which oh is yeah amazing and i'm so glad that during the demo they did hit the button every time because it would have bothered me if they had <laughs> left any of it um, but no whoever did that demo did it perfectly every time they rode by bamboo or anything they hit the button they collected it i was like yes 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 thank god i Please. agree that was that's always so annoying when you can't do that in games and you have to get off your horse i mean i get it like if i was on my horse in real life trotting along and i saw some bamboo i wouldn't you know probably try to pick it's it while not off always about realism though it's true sometimes realism isn't fun and that's why we have video games it's to cut out the bullshit of real life and just be like no i'm just riding my horse and i magically gathered this bamboo if i had a don't worry about it i would drop don't... it yeah like don't sit there and think about it too hard it's fine the wind is guiding it's fine <laughs> the wind is guiding you <laughs> and then next we hopped into combat so Jin can challenge warriors to lethal standoff. So we saw um, Jin walk up to this camp, I suppose is what it was, and there was a little prompt on your D-pad, and it said, "If you standoff. And if you push that, he approached, and then he held triangle down. I'm not sure what exactly that did, but it kind of... Yeah, they didn't have any, like... It didn't have any button prompts on the screen, so I'm not sure what he was even hitting to, like, yeah. do any of the stuff he was doing. Right, I wasn't sure what that was all about, and maybe that, you know, we're not supposed to know yet. But I'm assuming it's kind of like a, like Samer said, maybe there's a button prompt. I think they took it off because they want it to be more cinematic for this. That's yeah, yeah. But it sounds like that's the honorable way of approaching an enemy camp, is to do this the way of the samurai. And we'll get into the dishonorable ghost here in a second. But then when, as you're playing as the samurai, you have to use real skillful precision. There can't be any wasted energy, and every strike must count. Which... Sounds like my personal hell because I like yeah, to spray which is why I was confused. I was like, I don't understand what the buttons are for it to because like if you need to be that precise, right. is it a quick time event every time you do that? What is it? Are you do or do you need to just memorize combos? Like how are because if you were just watching this demo, and I obviously highly recommend that you do go watch this if you are interested. It looks easy. Because because there are no buttons like being hit, right? Like all mm -hmm. you see is him one hit killing people. And I'm like, I'm sure there is more to it than this, but right now this just looks really kind of boring. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because, yeah, yeah, you're right. Because it's... yeah, you're like, I don't know what you as the player are doing, because I don't have that knowledge. Um, but all I see is him just like completely owning three people in a row. Yeah. Which is cool. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, it's but really cool. But then you're like, Oh, is that a challenge? I don't know. I mean it probably is, but I just don't know what the challenge is. Um, but I thought it was interesting because I, they were like, oh, you know, when you watch samurai movies or whatever, and I was like, you know, I actually don't think I've ever watched a samurai movie. Dude, same. Uh, yeah, same. And I'm really sad about it because everyone was talking about the, their favorite samurai movies, and now I kind of want to go watch a samurai movie. Yeah, I feel like, you know, expand my horizons yeah. a little bit because I honestly had never even thought about it until they said same. that in the demo. Yeah, I same. Like, oh. I know. I feel like we've been missing out. <laughs> So that's the thing maybe we can, we can do. Instead of playing video games, we can watch some samurai movies. I think it's Oh, uh, yeah. Let's do it. It's relevant. It's relevant to our job. And the other thing they showed was the different um, stances. So it sounds like there's different stances you can use to optimize and make uh, your attacks more efficient. I saw water stance, which Stone I was like, is that, was is that a one? healing? Yeah, I'm not mm -hmm. sure exactly what each does. They, they did not delve into the, what each stance does. But, right. Yeah. They did not. And then... It changed to Jin the ghost, the dishonorable ghost. And I was like, hell yeah. Is that you? Yeah. Up for this. Yeah. Because the samurai one, like, you literally are just face checking, right? That's you me, just though. walk in and you're like, oh, hey, everybody. I'm going to stab you with my sword real quick. Hope you don't mind. That's me. And then for, for ghost, you are playing much more almost Assassin's Creed, -y, right? Like, yeah. more stealthy. Yeah. Um, or like a little Tomb raider -y if, you know, you got your bow and arrow. Um, and so I really like that. Now, I love always starting in stealth. I usually end up getting spotted, and then I end up, I'll probably switch to like, I don't know, samurai yep. at some point. But um, I just love being able to be like, yeah, go over there. Oh, oop, I just assassinated you. Ha ha, didn't see that coming did you and then <laughs> just running around with my bow and arrow and like sitting in a bush like that I, I really like that and so i was happy I do too i like it in theory i'm just so bad at the execution because i'm just so oblivious to everyone and everything around me that i always get caught 
So I thought it was funny because I tweeted out that, uh, you know, I'm definitely going to be the face checker, like Simon called it. I'm going to be the, the samurai. And then, like, two seconds later, she tweeted that she was very uh, absolutely going to do the ghost. And then someone put those two tweets together and sent them to us. And I was like, yep, that's yep, that's about right. I, I'm all for the dishonorable. I don't care. I don't need to, like, see your face when I stab you through with my sword. Is that why it's called Dishonored, the Bethesda game? <laughs> You know, no, it's not, but it's, I know. it would be good. Oh, I was, that was a good little good throwback, mod. a good little callback. I thought, okay. Anywho, yeah. so when it was showing the ghost gameplay, um, Jin approached the same camp that we saw when he was playing as the samurai. But he did some pretty cool stuff. You could He threw something at a wind chime, and he uh, I don't know, it distracted it basically him. Basically does the lure. Yeah, it's the lure thing that a lot of other yeah, games have. Yeah, so he the, had fire the enemy will be like, what's that? And then you wander over, and then you can sneak up behind them and kill right, them. Right, very AC, like Steimer was saying. There is a charm that we're going to talk about in a second where you can actually poison the wind chimes, I think is what it what it said, which sounded pretty interesting. But we'll talk about that in a sec. So it sounds like that's definitely where it's going to open up um, in the sense that if you want to do more stealthy cool you know unique kind of gameplay it's kind of like when you're taking over an ac camp it's like the best mm -hmm. way to describe it oh and you can use grappling hooks to swing across gaps they, they made that a fun. point it looks it looks great okay so then we they talked about customization so yeah so when he was in samurai mode his armor is much different than when he's in ghost mode because right. obviously the samurai have a very specific profile um and very specific armor needs versus if you are going in and assassinating people, you don't want to be wearing your samurai Big, outfit. chunky armor, yeah. Doo -doo, yeah, exactly. Doo -doo. So Jin will always have the same face. So when we say customization, we're not saying, like, hair and eyes and anything like that. But there are new hats, tops, pants, and, like Sam was saying, kind of overall armor. So armor gives you different mechanical advantages. So like she was saying, if you want to play as a samurai or as more ghost, it can help um, boost that play style that you would like. And as you explore, you'll find... Omomori charms, which gives you an edge in battle, such as slowly recover health while out of combat. You can oh, wind chimes will release poison vapors that kill enemies who pick them up. Smoke bombs can restore twenty five percent of your health, and you earn more charm slots by honoring Inari shrines, which is what we were talking about earlier. And Jin also has technique points that he can use to learn and upgrade other skills. And so, as we talked um, about, most important part, yeah, the flowers. Oh, yeah, the dye flowers. So you can, yeah, not only can you pick out your outfit, if you find flowers around the world, you can dye your outfit colors. And I was like, hell, yeah. <laughs> I always think Speaking about you. to me. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I always think about you whenever it's a customization and armor dyeing, because I know you love that shit. I wish oh, I yeah. cared more. I, I just really don't. But it showed some pretty, like, blue armor that he was wearing at some point. I was like, oh, that's cool. So it sounds like if you find them, you just pick them and then you die your shit. Yes. So, um, like Steimer read in the recap, it sounds like you're going to start off samurai and slowly but surely turn more into ghost. And the exact words from this presentation was, As your legend grows, you'll develop all new techniques which transforms Jin from a samurai into the ghost. You get to decide how these techniques evolve and grow over time. That so sounds like skill trees. <laughs> it sure does, doesn't it? And then they went on to talk about photo mode. There's color grading, depth of field, motion, movement. Control. You can control the facial wind. Facial expressions. The control. Oh God, those Kratos smile facial expressions from God of War. I just can never unsee them. They look so unnatural. And that's not a dig against you know the developers. It's just seeing Kratos smile is just weird to me. Yeah, no, that's true. It's just kind of a weird thing. I know that. Are you are you a photo mode connoisseur? Absolutely not. Yeah, same. Which is interesting. Like, I used to be into photography. I took a lot of classes on photography. But I don't know. In a game, I'm, I'm not really – I don't I don't know. I don't care. Yeah, the same here. So that's the thing. You can even create movies if you would like. It sounds like there's going to be some soundtracks that are uploaded. And they showed a few examples of that. But it was still kind of hard to grasp what exactly they were talking about. But, hey, still there. And then it's, I'm really excited about this. There's a Japanese voice track. And it's going to have English subtitles. And you can turn this on before the game even starts. Because um, I just played, obviously, all the Yakuza games in Japanese. I'm on a Japanese kick right now. I think experiencing this game in, uh, you know, Japanese would just seems natural to me. I think it was it was kind of weird listening to some of the characters speak English during a few parts of the trailer. And I was like, oh, I want a Japanese soundtrack. And then they announced it. And I was like, yeah, good job, guys. What was funny to me is that they were like, don't worry, there's the Japanese voices, and we'll have subtitles, and we'll turn them on before the game. 
and then they they showed it and then they didn't have the English subtitles <laughs> and I was like but what are they saying <laughs> I, 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 can't, I don't speak Japanese please turn on the subtitles I will read I will happily read but I need to I need something to read I know I thought about that too I wonder if that was just a flub I was like, yeah, I, I imagine it's been a been an oops, a little oversight. It happens from time to time. And then this next thing is pretty neat. They're calling it Samurai Cinema, and it's a black and white gradient. So you feel like you're playing your favorite samurai movie. You can turn this on from the very beginning of the game. It's not a feature I'm going to use, Correct. but actually, a lot of people were excited about it. I think it's all the people who, again, unlike us, have actually watched samurai yeah, movies right? before. Um, because it just, it did seem very pretty and, and kind of like an interesting and neat way to experience the game. Mm -hmm. But I've never, again, I've never watched one, so I don't necessarily have some sort of affinity or inclination to go that route. I just want to see, I like color. Yes. I can see doing this at certain points of the game, maybe to just like be like, Ooh, this seems like a cool thing that's happening. Well, all right, let's put it in cinema mode and then just have it be very picturesque. Like if you could go um, back and watch the cutscenes, maybe in black and white. Yeah. Could it could cool. be cool. But so, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like regular gameplay, I don't think I'll be do doing that in at yeah. all. Speaking of colors and pretty things, Simer, Mitch Crasson uh -oh. from patreon.com slash what's good games submitted a question for us. Mitch asks, what was the prettiest shot in the ghost reveal? Obviously, there are tons, but I like the one on the scaffolding on the cliff overlooking the valley. The prettiest? I don't. I, I don't know. Um, because I thought it was all very pretty. Uh, I really enjoyed the color palette. I enjoyed all the little animals. The I enjoyed animal again babies. the draw distance. So even the initial walk out to on the hillside where you see. I don't, it's probably not the whole island, but like you see a decent chunk of the island. Mm -hmm. I thought it was super cool. Just like, ooh, that is so nice. So pretty. I think the shot for me that stuck out was toward the beginning of the video, and you are kind of rounding that corner on your horse for the first time, and there are all those beautiful, bright, pink, vibrant flowers kind of like going up the hillside and whatnot. I uh, took a screenshot of it because I thought it was so pretty and I wanted to tweet it out and then I found the decapitated man in front of the shrine and then I overrode it and now I don't have any more. Whoops. But I thought that was beautiful. And then we have another question from Devin Nitz. Is there anything else you wish you saw from the Ghost of Tsushima? Oh, ah, Ghost of I did it. Ah, you did it. Ah, the... So, oh, fuck. Okay, don't, don't help me here. Okay. Tsushima. Okay, I won't. Tsushima. State of play. What was your favorite reveal from today? Thanks as always. I mean, I was just interested. I was happy to see that it, it did give me a lot of witchery vibes, but maybe in a more, I mean, I'm sure the story will be intense, but in a more, I don't want to say chill. That may, might be the incorrect word that I'm looking for, but I don't know. It had like, it had a, I'm flubbing on Like a meditative? Now, for, to me, yes, it's meditative. Yeah. It's more of, yeah, I was about to say melancholy. I'm like, melancholy yeah, is not the word yeah. I'm looking for, but yeah, like more meditative sort of quality to it. Um, and so I'm just really looking forward to getting on the horse, running around, grabbing as much bullshit as possible, meeting every fox I can, and just, <laughs> like, hanging out. And then, you know, when I feel like it, I'll go on tiny murder sprees as a ghost. <laughs> that would be great. Tiny murder sprees. Oh, my God. No, I'm, I'm with you. And I think, uh, you know, I saw some people talking about how it felt a little slow and meditative is the word that came to my mind and I'm glad you agree with it because in the beginning the first couple minutes of it I felt like we're just Jin on his horse kind of you know trotting along this beautiful landscape and if you just watch the stream I don't know about you but my buffering wasn't great so I went back and watched it in the 4k 4k glory on YouTube and it was gorgeous and gave me a much better appreciation of what the game actually looks like but it was it just at first I was like oh man this is cool it's beautiful but there's not a lot happening so when you're talking about how it kind of reminds you of the witcher but not i understand what you're saying because i think this game definitely is probably meant to be a little more, more oh i don't know what the word is now i'm saying, like not natural but more realistic in that sense that you're not going to see wyver wyverns what are they called the big yeah wyverns, wyverns yeah. floating around and seeing like people screaming and yelling and getting robbed down the street. I mean, who knows? But it definitely seems more like, okay, kind of take your time. Kind of like Red Dead was in that sense, but just in a completely different setting. Yeah, this is funny because so not only it gave me Pocahontas vibes, but then when the bird came, I was like, it's a little, it's like Snow White kind of. It's a of, Disney like, game. It's a Disney game. 
but not a Disney game. I don't know, but it was interesting to me because I was like, oh, there's so many parts of this that just seem kind of like pleasant. Yeah. And, and there's going to be so much of this game that is not pleasant, which I know and I'm aware of. Um, so I don't want to, I don't want all of you to be like, well, man, what? they talked about this game and I thought it was going to be like a Disney princess game. Oh, no, God. like you're, you're definitely going to murder a lot of people and it's going to be bloody and gory. But I think it, it seems like it could potentially have decent pacing in that it gives you lulls and then you know ramps up and then kind of has a nice little flow to it flow yeah i think the one thing to go back to devin's question that i would like to have seen i guess is more like what what exactly do we do in this game what is the point what and i know we got that we got a little more info in 27 2018 i think was when it was revealed when we was it 2018 that we got that beautiful trailer? I don't remember. I think it was because then the, the Resident Evil thing came before or after that. And I lost my mind. It was this last press conference Sony did. Remember mm -hmm. how that, oh, weird, yeah, yeah, that yeah. weird, like, but it was really pretty how they had those all those screens everywhere. Anyway, uh, I think we got more story info during that. But I haven't, I haven't seen that in a couple of years now. So I don't really remember what's going on. So and this is also something that I saw people talk about is it. The, the complaint I'm seeing is this game looks like something that I have seen before. It looks like a game that I have played before, despite the feudal Japan setting. Like, what sets this game aside and makes it different from an Assassin's Creed game, from a Witcher game, from Red Dead Redemption in that sense? And we haven't really gotten that info, or if we have, I just don't remember it. No, I think that's fair. I mean this is a it's a game like where it's it mm -hmm. is an open world game and like yeah honestly for the most part it's not doing a whole lot different i don't know that that's necessarily bad right um because i think at this point we have some pretty good gameplay formulas down and some pretty good gameplay loops so i i am not like that doesn't bother me at all um especially because this setting is something that is very rarely touched on in games especially right now and so it's like, okay, the setting is the appeal. If you like the setting, you'll probably want to play this game. Or if you're just like, man, I really have a hankering for something open world. And I liked these types of games that this seems similar to, so I'll just give it a shot. Um, like, that's who the game is for. And for, for story, honestly, I don't need much more than what you what was I read earlier. Because you already it. sold on it. You were I, like... was, I mean, I don't know. How much more do you need to know? You, the Mongols are bad, and you're going to liberate Tsushima from them. Like, that's that's it. It's pretty like I honestly don't expect a lot of like. I mean, there might be plot twists of like betrayal inside mm -hmm. this this little canister, but I don't see anything wildly crazy happening in it. Especially if it's based a lot. Okay, you know, you and I really do need to watch some samurai movies because maybe they are whack a mole crazy. I don't know, but <laughs> for me, I'm like, it feels like they're probably more straightforward than your average bear. Maybe, yeah. I so I, I see what you're saying. So you're thinking like it's going to be a story. You're not expecting some crazy, like, this is a very poor example, but Last of Us type story where it's like up and downs and oh my god, high drama, whoa, more of like, okay, bad guy is probably going to be there. You get rid of the bad guys and you go on here with your bad self. That is my hunch, but I obviously could be incredibly wrong and I'm fine being incredibly wrong. Okay, because yeah, because you, you're fine with that, of course, but also it sounds like you're more or less already sold on this, whereas people, I guess, who aren't so sure if they should even care about this story probably want to see more. Are there going to be fun companions? Are there going to be like other mechanics to the game granted like we have a couple more months before this game comes out they said they're going to be giving us more info so i guess we just stay tuned Steimer. absolutely yeah i just think i think today's reveal was really nice it mm -hmm. gave me all of the meat and potatoes that mm -hmm. i personally need in order to be like cool i'm in um i guess if you are yeah if you're somebody who's super story driven maybe you need i mean i also would consider myself story driven but I'm like, I have enough of the bones of the story that I actually don't necessarily care to know any more of it because then that's when you start to kind of ruin it for yourself a little bit or you mm -hmm. try to anticipate a little too much of what's going to happen. And, you know, sometimes you just need to sit back and relax. And so are you – I got to ask because there was a time – I know things probably have slowed down to some extent for you where you heard the words open world and you're like, oh, God, get it away. Yeah. Well, I mean, first of all, this is an island, so I can't imagine it's going to be massive. Open island. Yeah, open island I'm fine with. Cool. If when it's like open continent, I'm like, oof, I don't, fuck, uh, I don't <laughs> open know. Open region, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then when they opened the map, at least the stuff that they had on it didn't seem overwhelming. Yeah. It seemed like a reasonable amount of stuff. And I've played a lot of Sucker Punch games before. I feel like Infamous was a great 
series and also had a good amount of like busy work as well as interesting stuff to do and i was totally fine leaving the busy work when i wanted to but if i felt like having a little bit more runaround time i would go do the busy work so i feel like sucker punch has a pretty good grasp on open world and what is needed or they aren't they aren't ubisoft is what i'm going to say no, that's fair right? so ubisoft has over bloated and now feels like they can never take anything away because the audience expects the bloat uh sucker punch i don't think has that problem sucker punch has always felt fairly lean in terms of their open world like they don't usually overdo it usually they, usually they could of course they serve you a plate of beautifully trimmed meats with a lot of the fat cut off yeah there's still a little bit of fat there just a but, little, it's but it's not, a good fat you're probably right you're not gonna get a mouthful of fat oh it's just that you bite you bite into the fat when you feel like it it's like you don't yeah. have to yeah you're not forced it's to chew through the fat optional. to get to the good shit correct got it perfect understood Okay, let's continue on with Unreal Engine 5 announced with gorgeous PS5 demo via IGN. So today, which was not today, which was like two days ago, Epic Games revealed the first look at the Unreal Engine 5, its next generation game engine designed with features meant to make game worlds more detailed and dynamic. To show off the power of its new game engine, Epic released a real-time tech demo called Lumen in the Land of Nanite which runs live on the PlayStation 5. Also, real quick, this was a huge write-up on IGN. I I tried to pull a Sucker Punch and Trim the Fat, but my version of fat might be something that's very interesting to you. So if you're really interested in getting into like, the real nitty-gritty... This might be like a Wagyu beef situation where that fat's marbled in real nicely. Mm. God, I love you, Samer. All right, so <laughs> Lumen in the Land of Nanite is a fully playable title made up of Unreal Engine 5's two new tools, Lumens, a dynamic global illumination tool, and Nanite, a virtualized geometry that lets artists import film quality art and assets into Unreal Engine. I see geometry in my butt clenches. I hate geometry so much. Oh, really? I like it. No, I, I just was so bad at it. And I, algebra was my jam in high school. So good at algebra, but geometry came along, and oh god, I couldn't handle we it. We are the opposite, and I love it. I, I was know, like, geometry, great. I got this shit. I'm a very visual person. No, no. <laughs> algebra, I was like... I don't know what you're talking about. The algebra is like a puzzle to me. Anyway, okay, I'm getting distracted here. So all the assets and visuals in the demo are reacting in real time, meaning the PlayStation 5 is processing the demo as it happens. Epic Games founder and CEO Tim Sweeney made clear the SSD and the dev kit is, quote, far ahead of current high-end PCs. He also explained Unreal Engine 5 is meant to, quote, do things that are absolutely not possible today. The Lumens and Nanite demo showcase multiple instances where changes in the environment happen in real time, and Unreal Engine 5 is capable of rendering these changes immediately. When rocks crumble, it's not a pre-rendered cutscene, but a high-resolution tool, a oh, high-resolution rock asset moving in real time based on the player's actions. When a light source changes, it's not multiple tricks to simulate a flashing light, but real-time processing power at work. What's more, Epic says that the level of quality seen in the demo is going to be easier to replicate, especially from smaller developers who previously didn't have the scale or time to render games at this level. Assets at this kind of level and quality will be made available on the Unreal Store for other developers to easily use. Quote, it's really easy. You go to the Quixel Asset Store, download the rocks in the mountains and the assets you want, and you just place them in there, says Libre... Lib lib Library? Yeah. I guess I must have cut out who that person is, and that is totally my fault. I'll look this up. It's actually massively lowering the barrier of entry of how complex it is to make a game level. So if you ha did not see this, if you were like, wow, I've been working or I've been in stuck in the couch and Kim I don't... Library, oh. CTO of Epic Games. Got it. Thank you, CTO. Yeah. Um, but if you somehow missed this, this was part of Jeff Keighley's Days of... It's called Days of Summer, yes? Is it Game Games Fest? of Summer? Games of Summer. Is it, Game Fest. I thought. Oh, I think okay. he. I thought he was Summer Games Fest. It's got, there's a branding thing that, that I'm failing. Well, no, you might be. Okay, he but... is. He is Summer Game Fest. I think you're thinking summer of Game IGN, Fest. which is the Games of Summer. Oh, I might be, but it, this was part of Jeff's thing. Yes. Um. So. Uh. And Summer this... of Gaming is IGN's thing. <laughs> 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 I don't know. It's got summer. It's got games. It's, it's the time where it's hot. That's all I got for you. <laughs> but go watch this. Go find it. Go find it on YouTube. Mm. Go find it on Twitter. Go find it somewhere find because it. it is gorgeous. And not only is it gorgeous, it's really interesting. I mean, if you're not interested at all in tech, like it probably won't be as cool to you. But it is fascinating when they do explain what's happening because if you don't know, 
and you're just watching it, you might just be like, wow, this just looks like a really pretty any insert game here, right? Like a really pretty Tomb Raider is kind of what it reminded me of. Mm -hmm. Um, And I was like, oh, wow, that's neat. Whatever, sure. But then they were like, no, no, here are all the triangles. And I was like, whoa, all right. And then they were like, and here's how all this is working, similar to what you read earlier, was that's not a rock asset moving. Like, these are a bunch of triangles that are happening because you did a thing over here. And you're like, and like, oh, you can put your hand on the door, and that's not a pre-rendered scene. I think someone just fell down the stairs outside this one. <laughs> um, and, um, okay, it's not a pre-rendered that's something scene. Sh- that's just a, that's something like it is a contextual animation that can be triggered based on. And I'm like, that's dope. Okay. That can be so cool for games moving forward. Did, sorry, to go back to that unfortunate soul who fell down the stairs, did it like <laughs> shake your apartment? Because you went yes. out of, because you legit went out of focus when that happened. And I think it shook your camera. Yeah. Was like, <laughs> no, it did. It shook the whole, it shook my monitor. Oh no, I hope that person's no, okay. They didn't actually, they were just stamping down it. Oh, okay. It, it was just, it was a lot of impact happening. Oh my gosh. Uh, but no, Sam, I'm with you. And thank you for bringing up that stuff of like what's actually happening because when I watched this I was half asleep it was like eight in the morning because I go to bed at like 2 30 because I'm a very very bad adult child and I was watching it and that was kind of my takeaway is like this is just a really really pretty thing this looks mm-hmm. gorgeous and this is kind of that next generation graphical leap that I would expect I know uh, you know we talked about how well temper your expectations but seeing this it, it was like oh wow this is real nice and then reading this article at IGN again I would recommend reading it and looking it up because they go into kind of that fancy triangle talk that Stimer was talking about. I was like, oh, so that's what's happening. Like the rock rolling down the hill. That's in language I can understand. I mean, it looks yeah. beautiful. And then, so the other thing, the other key piece of this for if, again, if you're like looking at the someone, you're like, Meh, whatever. Um, I think this part, this, this quote in particular from CEO Tim Sweeney is very um, impactful. Hmm. Quote, the world of loading screens is over. So taking that and like letting it really sink in. So after the Unreal 5 engine demo, uh, Jeff Keighley sat down with Tim Sweeney and three, two other dudes. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't remember their names. Um, two other dudes from Epic uh, discussing the engine. And that's one of the things that, that he mentioned. He was like, the days of geometry popping up as you're going through game environments are ended because of the way that they have built this engine, because of all the systems that are in place. I'm like, that's... The implications of that are huge and That's really a crazy interesting. Thought. Yeah. These of loading screens are gone. Yeah. It's like a breakup. So like it's not loading when you're walking in and you're like grabbing a door or whatever. Yeah. That's just something that they can build in on their end. I mean, obviously not all games will probably be, I don't know if all gaming engineers will have the capability of figuring that out. Hopefully, because it does it says, quote, it's really easy in here, but I mean who knows? Yeah. Video games are never that easy, right? No, I mean, um, but us. it is it's really interesting to think what at least you know playstation 5 developers could do with this or i know that they showed it on ps5 but obviously unreal engine also goes on xbox so mm-hmm. it goes it goes to a lot of people and what's crazy God, you know to what you... i would love what tell me tell we need, me we need more mass effect but on unreal again like <gasps> stop with frostbite frostbite does not work for certain types of games yeah just accept it and move on yeah and go license Unreal Engine 5 because it looks amazing. Okay, question. Uh huh. What Mass Effect character do you think would look most terrifying in Unreal Engine 5? Because. Terrifying? When I say this, because they're aliens, right? Like, yeah. how, how real nitty gritty into the details do we want to get with Garrus, for example? I mean, I think the most terrifying one for me was that would, would have to be re- redone, obviously, his model is Saren, but when he's like half Geth. Oh, because he like, he's not only Turian, which have a weird structure to begin with. Right, true. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Then he's like also part robot, and like flesh is coming off of his body. Yeah, because I'm looking at these statues of uh, of of Garrus here, and I I feel like this would not be beautiful. And you know, sometimes it's better to be an SD than HD. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Like, why do you think I switched my camera to something that's not 4K? Oh my god, because it looks better in 1080p. Get the heck out of here! You beautiful, no matter what. I see you in person all the time. I'm sure it's been five months or four months or three months, but you's pretty girl. Um. Anyway, I was going back to this Unreal Five story. So what's cool too is that this demo was going to be playable at GDC. It was going to be a thing that people could play. And I'm so sad 
that that didn't yeah. happen. But it's also crazy to think about when was GDC going to be? That was in March. Was that, was uh, that in March? March? GDC yeah. 2020. I think, I think it was middle of March. Or going to be middle of March. Yeah, right? and then they. Yeah, I think that's what it was. And then they were going to push it to August. But whenever it was going to be months ago, it's crazy to think that you know it, just how this whole uh, COVID situation is fucking with the schedules of everything, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm glad that they figured out a way to get it out. To, I mean, obviously, it's not that hard. You just put it on the internet. But it's <laughs> that sounds terrible. <laughs> but <laughs> that's not what I meant. I didn't mean it like that. I'm so sorry. I'm very blunt sometimes. I'm very Vulcan. Yeah, that's why we love um, you. But uh, my train of thought derailed. Oh, so again, while watching this demo, seems kind of like yeah, 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 very pretty. But what you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. And then like the very ending of this demo, I thought was fucking killer so the very end of the demo she's like oh the thing over there has opened up and i was like oh god you have to backtrack through all this bullshit Uh uh-uh you like squirrel suit it on the way down you just fucking dive bomb and just oh yeah and i was like yes like i was so excited because (laughs) i know it's just a demo but i always hate it when games are like ah yes the thing over there has opened and now we must go there and i'm like i don't know can i just no Please don't. Just travel there. I don't yeah. want to. I don't, don't want to walk. Bring me a portal. Do something. Make my life easier. And then easier. she was like, "You don't have to walk. I can fucking fly." And I was like, "Yes." Uh no, it looked real pretty. And like Simon said, if you haven't seen it, go watch it. It'll make not only that the scarf technology and the hair technology <laughs> on point. There you go. Simon's pr- approval. Um, other Epic Games news. Epic Game also announced that it's waiving royalties on the first 100... Oh, I said $100 million. $100 million, Dr. Evil. Not quite. They're not, they're not that generous. Maybe in a couple years when they have way more Fortnite money. The first one singular million in game revenue starting today meaning developers using unreal engine will keep more of their profits epic online services is also available to make cross-platform play easier and my understanding is even once you reach that one million it's not like they take their five percent for that one million it's like for after the one million then it starts counting yeah pretty great it's great Fortnite will also be released on next-gen consoles at launch, surprise a new one, and will be migrated to Unreal Engine 5 in mid-2021. Sweeney says Fortnite will likely be the first game running on Un- Unreal Engine 5, but there are plenty of next-gen games currently in development using Unreal Engine 4 and even some first-party games that will use Unreal Engine, though Sweeney did not specify whether it's Unreal Engine 4 or 5. So basically... Sneaky, sneaky boy. It looks like we won't be getting Unreal Engine 5 games until mid-2021, right? That's how you can read that? Yes. Yes, which makes sense because the technology probably wasn't readily available to build anything by the time the consoles launched. Yeah. And finally, Unreal Engine 5 will be available in preview in early 2021. Okay, there you go. With a full release scheduled for later that year and will support current gen and next gen consoles, PC, Mac, iOS, and Android. Now, Steimer, you've worked in the Mm -hmm. video game industry. There were a lot of people who were a little confused as to why Epic Games didn't mention Microsoft at least once during this would you care to shed some light on that i mean i don't know specifics of what was penned or what went down here but i imagine there is some sort of co-marketing deal happening i just don't know what it is right like there is a world where obviously there's no world in which unreal engine 5 does not go to xbox or work on those games especially because they talk about cross-platform they just and then later don't specify Xbox at this current point. I also thought it was interesting. I thought it was interesting that this was PlayStation 5. I thought it was interesting that um, it was not necessarily a PlayStation event, but it was PlayStation focused mm-hmm. because of what you said, like Xbox was really nowhere to be found. I imagine it's something to do with the fact that Xbox had their own <laughs> event. I do kind of like that PlayStation, without doing it themselves, managed to one-up oh. Xbox and just kind of kick them in the teeth. I just thought it was, it just amused me. There's very little to amuse us these days. I, you have to take solace where you can. Mine is dumb bullshit like this, where Xbox was blow, blowing the horn of the next game, next gen gameplay, next gen gameplay, and then showed very little next gen gameplay. And then again, I don't even think it was necessarily, it wasn't even PlayStation. I feel like PlayStation just magically got this, like, PlayStation doesn't need to flex, man. They're just like, it'll speak for itself. Because this was more of obviously an epic thing, right? right? This was an epic games thing, but on PlayStation. Um, So I I do wonder if they're going to have more 
partnerships with PlayStation 5. I wonder if a lot of the first party titles will have more marketing deals with Epic. I think that's maybe what we are seeing here. Um, um, because otherwise I don't know why you would make no mention of Xbox because clearly the, this is not going to be the first year in the entirety of <laughs> Unreal where they're only on PlayStation. Yeah, there's uh, some kind of deal struck. I wonder what it was. But also, you know, it makes me wonder if Xbox had come out with their first party showcase that we know we're getting in July, I believe, what would the reception have been? You know, if, if it, they had shown that a few days before this epic thing, you know, would everyone still be like, oh, my God, because I feel like, like you said, you know, everyone's like, oh, this really is next gen. Oh, my God, this looks beautiful. This is it. This is it. And we didn't get that feeling from um, the Xbox presentation. No, yeah, it, it definitely the Xbox one was much of a you know the balloon like the air was deflated a little bit especially more after this right yeah, it was just yeah. like oh this is actually what it should look like and this is they're only mentioning playstation here and lord knows that from what we've heard on the internet who knows what's true sometimes xbox does seem to be a platform that is reportedly easier to develop for at this point did i say xbox because i meant yeah. to say xbox okay good yeah sometimes my brain mixes it words happens up. um and the playstation might be harder this time around theoretically again those could be just all hearsay um so i would just be curious to see what can be done on an xbox versus what can be done on playstation 5 but guess what it's probably gonna look similar because they do this generation too like <laughs> like <laughs> It's not going to be night and day, I don't think, right. but you never know. Um, if it is, then obviously that will make this generation much easier for you to decide on which one you want. It's all about that graphical powerhouse then, man. All the fl mm. Terra flippity flops, as Samer likes to call them. I just want to know also what these consoles look I mean, I know kind of what the Xbox One looks like. It's a I don't mini know fridge. The, I don't know the dimensions of oh, that bad boy. I think boy. they've released them, haven't they? Have they? I I'm pretty sure they up. have. But the PlayStation 5, I'm like... But how big is it? What is it? I need to buy a new media console, and I need to make sure that these both fit. <laughs> Do you think it's a safe assumption that it's going to be flat and rectangular? You know, I would. you would think. You would think, but look at the Xbox Series X, man. That's a little mini fridge. It is a mini fridge, so and I don't has... like it. I think it's kind of ugly. I know. It's not its fault. I just it's basically, a... it's actually, it's not a mini fridge. It's literally a mini PC tower. That's true. And I just got a new TV stand, too, entertainment stand. I'm like, well, this isn't going to fit. Oh, well. Rip. It's okay. I'll, I'll fucking care. It's fine. All right. Shall we move on? Sure. Would you like to do, do it? Or would you like sure. me to do it? Yeah. So, guess what? What? PlayStation Studios brand will launch alongside the PlayStation 5. This comes to us from gamesindustry.biz. Sony has developed a new umbrella to brand and unite its first-party PlayStation titles. The PlayStation Studios brand will go live in PlayStation 4 and 5 games later this year and will only be featured on games developed and managed by Sony Interactive Entertainment's Worldwide Studios organization. Alongside the logo, PlayStation has created a new opening video that will appear at the start of its games. The video features characters from Uncharted, Little Big Planet, God of War, Ratchet & Clank, Horizon Zero Dawn, and The Last of Us. The PlayStation Studios branding will not be ready in time for the launch of The Last of Us Part Two or Ghost of Tsushima. God, ah, wait, ah, oh, that's oh. in the that's in the that's in the write up is wrong. That's that's not me. I read literally what was on the paper. Okay, okay, so, okay. So now we need to stop. How, what does this mean for me? Because I'm still. Do you want to take a shot or do you not want? No, to No, it's shot? up to you. You have my fate in your hands. Simon. I'm gonna say you don't have to. You can if you would like. No, no, no I need an be... order. I need to be ordered. Oh, don't do it. Okay. Um, because that was not me misreading that was a typo in the story <laughs> but then how did you say did you say Sushima correct i think so okay. Sushima. okay um of which are both due to arrive this summer so, sorry y'all we had a little bit of a kerfuffle there it will almost <laughs> it, will, it will also miss the launch of horizon zero dawn on pc although lempel who would be eric lempel uh says that any future games it releases on other platforms will also carry the branding uh, alongside games developed by Sony's first-party studios, such as Naughty Dog, Insomniac, Santa Monica Studio, Media, Mo Media Molecule, and Guerrilla Games, the PlayStation Studios brand will also apply to games made for made by work-for-hire developers, but under Sony's direction. So this, uh, <laughs> GameIndustry.biz, GamesIndustry.biz, excuse me, it's a very, very long write-up and a lot of quotes um, from Eric Lempel, like Simon said, Senior Vice President and Head of Global Marketing at Sony Interactive Entertainment. And let me tell you, they are very, very proud of this logo and very proud of this animation. 
Oh, I'm sure. Very, I very proud no of doubt. it. And I'm I mean, sure they they like, don't very get, long and hard. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. It's really nice, and the people who created it absolutely deserve the praise because it is uh, something fancy. And I think somewhere in this write up, it says it looks like something that would play before an MCU movie. But it's just. Oh, it does. Yeah, it does you see. Like it. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It, it looks really good. It, it's just kind of funny. These little PR beats. You know how much fluff goes into a. Oh, I mean. I mean, Eric's, of course, excited about it. He's the marketing of guy. Of course he is, yeah. I mean, he should be. It's a nice logo. But when I, I was going to just copy and paste this whole article in the show notes this week, and I'm like, oh, I definitely cannot do that because that is a long story. But And it's a lot of saying nothing, to be quite honest. Yeah, it, they're really excited fine. about it. Yeah, and they're going to add new characters to it as new characters become relevant to the Sony sphere of life. Makes so, sense. There you go. All right, and then we have one more Sony news segment or, yeah, article for this first segment, whatever, words are hard. Okay, in case you miss it, Sony Edition. A few days back, Sony Interactive Entertainment posted a Japanese job listing for a role in the SIE Materials Department, which stated the PS5 was going to release in October 2020. Sony then told Famitsu that the October release date was wrong and that the official release window remains holiday 2020. Someone somewhere is in a lot of trouble. But, Simon, do you buy October release date, October 2020? Sure, why not? Nah, I don't know. I'm just wondering. That technically, that technically is holiday. Yeah, Halloween. That counts. There's a holiday in that month. Yeah, yeah. and it's right before November, which yeah. is the big holiday month. I thought so that was yeah, funny. I mean, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be terribly surprised. Yeah. Um, but the, the job listing is saying like blah 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 blah. The, the PlayStation Five, which will be released in October 2020, and it's like oopsie. And not What's that- funny is, yeah, I, I like oopsies like that happen a lot. It's just people not talking to each other, which I find amusing. It happens when there's all these huge corporations, man, and companies. It's just so many cooks in a kitchen. And also, um, oh, I don't know, it was a few months ago, Xbox, what, somewhere in Xbox, one of their territories posted their release date, which is Thanksgiving of this year. I mean, I say they posted their release date because, of course, then Microsoft came back and was like, nah, this isn't right. Who knows what it really is? But right now, we have an October 2020. And a Thanksgiving 2020. Yep. Do you see, we'll see? Do you see these consoles releasing like weeks apart, or do you see them launching like a month apart? Do you think it even matters? That's a good question. I feel like they would be around similar times, and I feel like they're playing a little bit of a game of chicken to see. I mean, but also then you have to. I mean, you just need your supply chain needs to be ready. <laughs> like <laughs> your supply chain's not ready. Uh, I hate to tell you this, but right. you're not selling shit. Um, but I, I can't imagine one company allowing the other one to be on the market that much longer for, than it. Yeah. Right? Because if, if you reach first, then unless you're Nintendo, a lot of people are just going to be like, yeah. I mean, you well, can Nintendo do whatever is, the fuck you want. Is, Nintendo is in its own world, <laughs> right? Just orbiting around its own little planet somewhere. It really truly is. They have they've they've scraped out their own little nest egg in the market and they're just like now nah, we chill here we're just gonna we're, we're good we, we live don't here need to now. do anything we live here uh whereas xbox and sony even though xbox says we're not competing with sony nah, yeah, yes you are, yeah, you are. and <laughs> yes you are <laughs> at least for the time being yes you are you haven't done enough to differentiate yourself yet maybe 10 years down the line you'll you'll be correct and you are maybe working toward that goal to be a little bit more like nintendo where everybody has their own piece of this pie uh but right now i i can see every you know your average person who does really like video games wants a console it's probably only going to be able to afford one of these unless you are someone insane like one of us uh, or, you know, you really, you budget for it, right? Like, but I, I don't know that the average person really wants to put almost $1,000 into their budget around the holidays for two consoles for themselves. Man. But. Yeah, no, that's that's a very valid point. I feel like this this generation, the PS4 and Xbox One, released a week apart. Because I feel like I went to Best Buy. One... I was trying to remember. I can't remember. Okay, like... let's hold on. Let's go to the Google machine. PS4 release date. I feel like it was a week apart. So I'm going to look this up. Because that's what I let's do. See. Okay, so. Do-do-do-do-do. So Xbox One originally released November 22nd, 2013. PlayStation 4 originally November released 15th? November 15th, 2013. So yeah, it was a week apart. Yeah. Okay. I imagine it being something like that. Me too. I can't imagine them being like, well, 
playstations in october and microsoft's like that's cool we'll wait till thanksgiving absolutely not this is no. never happening agreed agreed especially now i feel like when more than ever xbox has been competing with playstation i mean especially the other the thing you generation. do need to consider though like mm -hmm. i suppose there's a possibility of their hand being forced if they don't have software ready oh like that's the only thing that i could see them being like well shit we kind of have to do this because Halo's oh finished, yeah right? like yeah, yeah so yeah. you are beholden to that and you need to launch your platform with a killer triple a title we already know that xbox is his halo so it's fair you know halo and xbox are gonna have to you know mosey out onto this party together hand in hand and mm -hmm. hope yep. they don't break up halfway through yeah but assuming that these release dates are correct but who knows what will happen remember when we thought we were getting a playstation event in february remember that didn't we? No, it was March. Wait, when was when did Mark Cerny read us to sleep? <laughs> I don't even remember. I don't remember when that was. Uh, we all thought the PlayStation reveal event was happening and never did. But on that note, one Christine Simer, we have finished the PlayStation Power Hour. I only screwed up Ghost of Tsushima. Tsushima. I have to stop and pause every time because I want to say Tsushima and then, ah, oh, fuck, I said it. Is that a drink? No, you're no. Okay. You're, you were giving an example. Okay, thank. Okay, I love. I like it when you play judge. So we are going to move on to non Sony PlayStation news right now. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the What's Good Games podcast. Normally, this would be where Steimer and I tell you about all the video games we've been playing. But life has been pretty busy right now, so spoilers, we haven't been playing anything. Actually, I did- You know what? Oh, go ahead. And I'll say, I did start Sleeping Dogs, but I haven't played enough of it to actually talk about it. So, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. But, oh. it, but in better news, the news kept on coming this week, so oh, we got a whole, lot, a sure whole lot to talk about more. We absolutely do, and we're going to kick things off with Nintendo reveals Paper Mario, the Origami King, coming to Switch. This comes from Kotaku. Why do I want to keep saying the Origami Killer? Is that Heavy Rain? That's, yes, it's Heavy Rain. Fuck! Yes. Oh my god, that's all I wanted to call it. Is Jason! The Jason! Sean! Jason! Jason! If you have not played Heavy Rain, you're missing out. You really are. That is a, that is a gem of a game right there. All right, so Nintendo announced a new Paper Mario game coming to Switch July 17th called Paper Mario, the Origami King. It'll, I almost said killer again. It'll be the sixth <laughs> game in the series and the first on the new console. The story looks like it'll revolve around trying to liberate Princess Peach's castle from a new paper-based menace called King Ollie, who, according to Nintendo's press release, wants to fold the entire world. Exploration will be based on a new ability called A Thousand Fold Arms, in which Mario extends his appendages in weird ways to solve puzzles and navigate environments. It sounds like you'll be able to team up with a few allies at various points as well, including Bowser. A short clip has surfaced on Nintendo Japan's YouTube page that shows combat in a little bit more detail. In the video, the player faces off against enemies in a ring-shaped arena and needs to get them lined up in order to hit as many possible in a single turn. Nintendo has had directs specifically for Pokemon and Animal Crossing this year, but none laying out its more general plans for the coming year. As a result, the back half of the Switch's 2020 release calendar is looking a little sparse. Paper Mario the Origami King will certainly help fill that gap a bit. A data miner found that the listing for the game on the eShop... A data finder, oh, a data miner found, has found the listing for the game on the eShop where a 1.0 version of it appears to have been uploaded on May 4th. That strongly suggests that the game is finished. Nintendo tends to finish making games well before release, but this is a long lead time even for them. I mean, I wish that they would just release it sooner because it's oh. the same date Ghost of Tsushima is coming out. Yes. I had a, uh, yeah. So I would like for them to not only spread the love a little bit, but also give me something new to play because I'm tired of Animal Crossing. No, this game looks when so When I saw cute. this on Twitter, I was so excited because even though I've never played a Paper Mario before, uh, that's mostly because I haven't had a lot of the Nintendo consoles lately. Mm -hmm. I've always thought they looked super cute and I just, I don't know what it is about them. I'm a sucker for the art style. Just like, this is adorable. I must get get in there, get in there, little guy. And I really actually like the origami twist on this one. I think it's pretty cute. Um, so I just like, I want something 
happy and whatever to play like to just not think about the world and yeah. this seems like it and i'm upset that i have to wait until july 17th i know if it's ready i mean i would say but the marketing but clearly they have some weird marketing going on because to, re to reveal the game like we did it's kind of a head scratcher i mean on on one hand it's like okay but on the other hand it's like huh that was a choice like what do you, what do you think about all that like the stealth release or the stealth announcement, rather. I would have preferred a stealth announcement if it was closer to the release. Like, mm -hmm. I wish it would be actually pretty, especially right now. Right? right? Like, everyone is on the internet. Everyone is looking for something. They probably feel like they don't want to super step on the toes of Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing is still doing really well. So, oh, I get okay. that. But even if they were like, it's a month or whatever. But I just feel like, I mean, it doesn't matter, right? There's obviously been longer PR cycles than this. Okay. But I, if you're going to do a ghost drop, I kind of feel like do it and then just have it be out. Just have it be out. Yeah. It's, just give me the thing. It's interesting because you take a few things into consideration. One is the rumor that Nintendo has canceled their E3 showcase or whatever it was going to be. You know, yeah. with the summer stuff going on. I got to put this hair clip away. I keep playing with it. These little butterfly clips. Oh, yeah. Those oh, are fun. I know, but I'm like pinching my skin. <gasps> anyway. Um, yeah, so they were gonna, they were supposedly gonna have their own showcase this summer, but Eurogamer and I think it was VCN has both said that it's been canceled. Obviously, Nintendo has not come out right and admitted to that, but both are pretty credible when it comes to this kind of stuff. So, I mean, it seems likely because this would have been something they would have saved. Like this would have been an E3 thing, right? Right. So it makes if you wonder: was this is this the only thing that's actually gonna be ready? Is that why they did the you know? the announcement the way they did because it's the only thing or is like is literally nothing else ready for reveal right now like what it's just, i don't know if it would necessarily be that it just might be like they would have previewed more stuff because of e3 but maybe now that e3 is not happening they don't feel that pressure anymore mm. so maybe they are like you know what Take let's just time. talk about the things one at a time yeah we don't need to talk about pokemon two years in advance like they did that one year they don't we'll just we got Paper Mario here. Yeah. Two months two months away. Again, I kind of wish they would have kept the timeline even a little bit shorter just because of the context we are in right now as a species as a whole. <laughs> well, like you um, said, if this was an E3 announcement, it would have made sense because then when, after yeah. it would have only been a month, right? Yeah. Um, the other thing to think about, too, is late March, there were all those rumors about since it's Mario's 35th anniversary, we're going to be getting the remastered Mario Galaxy, the N64 remaster. Uh, I think there was another one in there. And also, in that report, a new Paper Mario game was also teased. Now, whether or not you want to take this announcement as validation or whatever, what do you want to call it, that those rumors are correct. Confirmation. Confirmation. Thank you, baby girl. Um, that's something else, too. It's like, okay, so does that mean that maybe we got Paper Mario now, but does that mean we're going to be getting those remasters coming up? Are those ready? Are they going to be what's filling the back end of Nintendo Switch's catalog for the rest of the year? I would be happy with that. I just want Mario 64, to be honest. That's the game I want the most. It's fair. Thanks. I'm glad you think it's fair. So for those of you who haven't seen the video, it starts off with Peach waddling out to the sound. She's an origami style. She's a, yeah, yeah. So I imagine if you were an origami craft, this is the sound you would make. It's like, burp, 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 burp. that's not at all what it sounds like very like heavy and it's actually kind of like it has like this dark vibe to it right with the music that's playing and then she says how good to see you will you crease yourself and be reborn like me which is what i use to pick up all of the ladies when i mean that's how i yeah i definitely pick up people at bars with yeah, that yeah ask them to crease themselves like you how right? you crease yourself like hey you want to crease yourself like me and then they say no and then you drop them into the ground like pizza i mean with Mario. i, I Obviously, even if he said yes, I think she would have said no and dropped him out of the ground. Oh, you think so? Oh, because, yeah, then yeah. she says wrong answer, she says right wrong answer. answer, right answer. You, uh, yeah, yeah, right. She says wrong answer, right answer. It matters not. Your replies are all paper thin. Goodbye. <laughs> Drops him down, and then you see flashes of him, Baby Bowser, Shy Guy, Babom, who are still in that classic, like, paper. Paper style. style they're, they're, yeah, style. they're 2D. They're not folded. Yeah. Uh, romping around the world, and it looks like there's some seas to explore and all sorts of different terrains so i'm i'm excited about this i don't i haven't played a mario or a paper mario game since n64 which is a, a crying shame because i heard that thousand year door is like the best there is um 
and it makes me wonder, you know, what's this game going to be like? Because I've heard that after Paper Mario on Nintendo 64, a Thousand Year Door, the games kind of went in this different route. And so I think the hope is that they kind of unify all of them and just make it like a, like a Breath of the Wild, it Breath of the Wild defy it, but obviously to not that drastic extreme. But who knows? Yeah. yeah, I mean, it looks it looks like there's a lot of you know exploring and walking. Around. I, again, I haven't played a Paper Mario game, so I don't know what they've been like. But what I saw, I really liked. I tried Color Splash. Actually, that's a lie. I played that for like five hours, and then I was like, eh. you're like me, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, I mean, I might do that with this because with Galaxy, even I played. I mean, I played for more than five. I think I played for like ten something hours, but then I kind of fizzled out. I feel like I will fizzle out of this game probably unless it is very heavily edited um but i i feel like that's fine also i'm okay with that like i don't mm-hmm. need the mario game to last me 30 hours i just don't um but yeah so I, I yeah i saw the thing i thought it was really cute another thing that would be fun i imagine that they'll do is especially again now we're all stuck at home um paper craft stuff right like oh. like why not release the stuff to be like cool here fold up your own peach or here's how you would do this like you could give oh. people the pattern in order to figure out how to actually i don't know if it's possible i imagine they built them that way maybe they didn't though but it would be cool if, if that's you a could good idea kind of like yeah. yeah yeah i i was just thinking to nintendo labo like my mind went back i'm like oh crap yeah nintendo and crafts oh man. yeah oh labo. yeah no but not that, don't boy. do that but yeah that'd be a really cute idea maybe in like a well nintendo doesn't really do i don't know anyway sam you have the good ideas again Last week, remember, you said you were going to go to... Oh, who were you going to talk to last week? Was it Corey about something? Or it was... Hi, why do you think I remember I know, I just, I just started I talking. And then I was like, oh, wait, Samra doesn't remember I anything that she talked about. I don't. My brain is it's just fine. like... It's fine. I was going to try to... dumps every, every evening. It just deletes. Clearly, I'm not much better than you are. So that's kind of the sad truth of it. But anywho, the, the whole idea of this game is King Ollie has transferred Princess Peach into an origami, uprooted her castle, and sealed it shut with magical paper streamers. Never oh, no. fear, as our mustache paper hero and Mario and his new friend Olivia are here to save the day. So it sounds cute, sounds wholesome, sounds like something Nintendo would come up with. I just want it now. Interesting that they announced it the way they did, but um, it's fine. Nintendo, I, I think I've given up trying to figure out their motives and how they do things because it just doesn't tend to make sense. Well, they probably didn't want to announce it on the Sunday, right? So if you get if you have news, you typically don't want to really release it on a Friday because or over the weekend because press aren't working. Are we? So to release it on a Thursday makes sense because you'll hit time zones. People are working on Thursday, but even if they're not, they're still working in their time zone on Friday. So... You wouldn't, like, this makes sense for this day because it's, like, almost exactly two months out. Yeah. I just want to showcase. I want a, I want a Nintendo Direct, Simer. That's all I want. I want my Breath of the Wild, too. That's probably not happening. I want the Metroid, which probably isn't happening for a while. Is Pikmin coming? Who knows? At least, I don't even know if we're still getting our Pokemon DLC. Are we still getting our Pokemon DLC next month? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. World is... I didn't know we were supposed to be getting any because I've not actually been paying that much attention. Yeah, I to thought Pokemon. it was next month. It's supposed to be the expansions, or at least one of them. Anyway, all right. Um, next story is this. Yeah, me or you? I can't. It's me. Oh, okay. it's me. Go, baby. I'm excited to get your your uh, <sighs> insider knowledge on this once I'm done reading it. So, put on, hold on to your butts, because Harvest Moon One World has been announced for Nintendo Switch. This is just via a good old fashioned press release. So can you imagine a world without tomatoes, strawberries, or even cabbage? This is the most random not array cabbage. of... Oh, not of a world without cabbage! Fruits and vegetables. Oh, no. and, I, that's the situation players will find them... The situation players yeah. will find themselves in, in the latest entry of the Harvest Moon series. Only an old book gives hints of what once was. Buoyed by a mysterious discovery, however, players will find themselves setting out on an adventure that spans... Not only their hometown, but the whole world. What kind of people and places await? From the gorgeous beaches of Halo Halo to the snowy mountains of Salmiaki. Sure. There's a, literally an entire world to explore. Quote, Harvest Moon One World features a brand new way of exploring Harvest Moon that seasoned players and new generations will both enjoy, says Hiro Maikawa. Yes, why not? Uh, president and CEO of Natsume. 
Over the decades, Harvest Moon has evolved, but has always retained the traditional family-friendly farming fun that the franchise is known for. That's a lot of Fs. Ah. The new engine and new graphics will upgrade this experience for 2020. We are so excited to share more about the features of Harvest Moon One World in the coming months. So fledgling farmers will explore an entire world full of new and familiar faces, unique villages, and adventurous challenges while managing their growing farm. The new title is being developed with an all-new engine and graphics, and it will arrive this fall. <sighs> are you excited? Uh, or are you, are you, are you like, tentative? Here's the thing. Are you tepid on it? I've been burned so many times, Simer. I, I so you're want not eager to jump into that pool. You don't know what temperature I, it is. I want to jump in the pool. I want to jump in it. So I want to believe it's the most toasty, 100 degree. That's kind of hot. That's a hot tub. That's, that's, mm -hmm. I was like, that's hot. Okay. That's hot I, don't, I don't know what a pool you temperature is. You want it to be like 80. Yeah, sure. 85. Yeah, 80, 85. A nice 85. I want to hop in there. I want it to be smooth, silky water. I want to come up to the surface. I want there to be whiskeys floating in little flamingo cup holders all around me. I want the sun to be shining. But I think what's going to happen is I'm going to jump in there. It's going to be a frigid at like 50 degrees. And I'm going to wake up. I'm going to like surface. And then the, the, circulation. the entire surface is going to be nothing but flames. And oh, it's not going to be right. good. No, like here's the thing. is, uh, Yeah, you haven't liked a Harvest Moon game in a while. No, you and like this, story this... of seasons now. So I understand. When I saw this headline in the show notes, I was like, oh, I actually don't know if Brittany is like excited for this or is dreading this. It sounds so promising. A new engine, this world. I mean, a world without cabbage to me is a good world to live in regardless Cabbage is delicious. Simon, it's the opposites, man. We're just opposites, baby girl. And that's why we get along so well. So it's I, not like a thing you're gonna hanker for, though. You're not gonna like grab a head of cabbage and take a bite of it. I mean, I, I don't. Why not? Is that what you, you would do? Never. You no. do that if it's that's delicious. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying that's not like the strawberries. Okay, sure, you can like just grab and eat the tomatoes. Again, you can grab. I don't know why you would. You can though. It's mm -hmm. a thing people could probably do. The cabbage is just a head scratcher. <laughs> yeah, but you can't have a world without cabbage, Simer. Like, okay. Why? Okay. So right here's the thing. Harvest Moon ha was up until I would say PlayStation Two era was one, of, if not the best farming sim out there. I think it might have been one of the only ones, unless there are some like one offs that I never played. So what happened was Natsumi has the publishing rights to the Harvest Moon IP. Like, in a sense, like, they can call their games Harvest Moon. Marvelous, the developers, have partnered with XSeed to now distribute their games. The problem is they can't call it Harvest Moon because that's what Natsumi owns, so now they call it Story of Seasons. And Story of Seasons is where, you know, the think of, like, the OG charm of Harvest Moon is. Like, those are the Harvest Moon games. Mm -hmm. And so when you see things like this, I've been burned so many times by this series, but I can't help but get excited but knowing how it all works and how it's all going in terms of it's just the the name of it, I just I, – I, I don't know how to feel. I'm so conflicted. I mean, I think it's fine to not feel anything about it until they show you something. That's true. But you know like me. I get right, so right excited about everything. Never, Brittany, never be excited when someone tells you something. Oh, usually God. Usually it's bullshit. I'm not like <laughs> Be excited when they show you something. Tell me more, when Mom. when they show you something, then you're like, oh, shit, tail wag. Let's go. I think that that's Wait. that's fair advice, especially in this situation where I haven't seen anything that's lived up to my expectations in a very long time. Now, if you, Steimer, were like, Britt, I saw this amazing farming game. You're going to love it. I would take your word for it because you've built Here's, trust. That's true. My point was more like, this is just a press release. <laughs> so if someone if, if you're announcing your game and it is just a press release did they even put any screenshots with this no we haven't did seen shit any? no there's none there's so nothing if you okay this is this is why i'm suspicious <laughs> if you are announcing your game via press release and you have zero assets to accompany it and the game is coming out this fall that to me says no it's not or it's gonna be bad it's Those gonna look like an ipad game like the last one did Right, exactly, because those are the only two reasons why you would release an announcement without assets is you're either, it's not ready yet, or it looks like shit, and you know it looks like shit. Hmm. And so you're hoping to get by on the Harvest Moon name, and you're like, no, please get excited about this thing, because we're, look, doesn't it sound amazing to go to the gorgeous beaches of Halo Halo? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so exciting, and to the snowy mountains of Saimiyaki. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, you're right. My My thought was, but see, see, there's the another side to this is, well, maybe we're going to be getting a showcase this summer and maybe they'll be showing the game there. But if that's the case, why announce it now and not just why not just wait 
unless you're yeah. trying to get ahead of something. We do know that Story of Seasons Friends of Mineral Town is coming out in July, and we know that Exceed Marvelous are working on another Story of Seasons game. So unless – but if that's coming out soon – sorry, but if these showcases are coming out soon, why would Harvest Moon feel the need to jump the gun now? I don't know. No idea. It's weird. It's a weird thing. Uh, we have a question from Cami from patreon.com slash what's good games who asks, I am a longtime fan of Harvest Moon, but there are a lot of people who don't even have the series on their radar. Do you think the huge success of Animal Crossing will see increased interest in the next game? Oh, that's an interesting point. It you- is, and it isn't in the sense that again, they didn't release it they with anything. They didn't release anything, right. If they had so- released like a, a reel right showing yeah Mm. Yeah, because then you might be like "Ooh, yeah another Ooh, yeah that's a thing i could go for i do i i think that then maybe you could make that connection but i think if you were not a harvest moon fan right now you don't know that this game exists that's a very good point because no one is out here searching for harvest moon and i don't think like if you see it scroll by and it has no assets you're probably not going to click on it yeah because what you need you need the visual of like oh what's that that's a oh i i They've got a shovel. I have a shovel in Animal Crossing. Ah, oh, what is this game, right? Like, you have to have some sort of a mental connection there. Aside from the name, the only reason you'd click on an article with this is if you are already a Harvest Moon fan. So I don't see this, at least this particular announcement style, helping the game at all in terms of wide awareness, which might be fine, and they might be exactly what they're going for. I don't know their PR plan. but No, you're you're correct, because I, uh, I, I'm 100% on board, and that's something I... I thought it was a little weird, but I hadn't really like dived into that thought process. But you're correct. All they've released is a logo, which looks like the exact same logo since the Super Nintendo days, minus it says One World underneath it. So, uh, Cami, I would say this doesn't bode well for you or me, but what I would say is we do have Story of Seasons, Friends of Mineral Town coming in July, and we know that we're getting another Is story. that on Switch? They or haven't. I don't think they've officially announced, but I'm. It's gonna. It has to come to Switch. It would. Yeah, but like at the release date time, do you think, or do you think it'll be? Oh, I'm sure it will, because it released later. on Switch um, in Japan. Because oh, it's already okay, out in Japan, cool. so you right. you would think, but you never know. Good, good, good. Yeah. I like I like that kind of shit on my Switch. It's perfect. It's it is like, perfect. You lay back on the couch and you just you grow some cabbage a little bit until I get bored. Yeah, you know, I sometimes you have cabbage needs. Yeah, you do gotta brush your cows. It's just it's a day in the life of a farmer, man. Brushing a cow actually sounds very therapeutic right now. I'm not it really lie. does. But then like, what if they have poopy butt and that's just, you know. they absolutely have poopy butt. It's a cow. It's I know, but that doesn't that. sound that, that's not therapeutic. I mean, if their butt said like lavender, smell like lavender. They find, like. Okay, I mean, they don't smell much better, but horses. <laughs> they, okay. <laughs> they don't. They smell probably actually about the same. But I like horses, and they're pretty. Oh, there you go. That's all you need. So. All right. One of the last main stories is for those of you who may have cabin fever. I thought I would throw this in here. Both Assassin's Creed's Discovery games are up for grabs this week via GameSpot. That I'm phrasing. Hold on. The story comes from GameSpot. Both Assassin's Creed Discovery games are up for grabs this week. There we go. Both AC Discovery Tour games can be claimed on PC via Uplay right now, giving you the opportunity to learn more about the worlds of the Assassin's Creed Odyssey and Assassin's Creed Origins Ancient Greece and Ancient Egypt. Both games are available to claim for free from Ubisoft's giveaway page until May 21st. And that is... That's only a couple more weeks. Yep. So that is free.ubisoft.com. There you go. Ubisoft describes the Discovery Tour games as living museums in which you can learn more about the various regions and cultures of both societies. Assassin's Creed brand director, oh god, uh, Etienne Alinea. I think it's probably like Etienne Alinea. Thank you, Samer. <laughs> like, French is like, you don't pronounce most of the letters. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Etienne Alinea. I also butchered it, but I just <laughs> you probably butchered did better. it a little bit now. <laughs> Uh, this lovely human hopes that the two games can help kids with an educational experience that's accessible, immersive, and fun while their studies are in disarray during the pandemic. Uh, you don't, Honestly, yeah, I mean, yeah. sure, it can help kids, but it, this actually just sounds nice for anybody of any age. That's what I was go. thinking. Yeah, yeah, that was a great, great call up, Brittany. Thank you. You um, are so welcome. Because I, it's, I'm old now. I'm not super old, but it's just more of like school was a long time ago is what I actually meant to say. There you go. Yes, I understand. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> I don't think I'm that old. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Don't at me with you like, I'm older than you. I'm I'm aware people that are older than me exist in the world. Um, but 
it's what it's actually been one of those things where lately and by lately i mean the past couple of years i've been like oh maybe i should try and re-engage those parts of my brain that i have been dormant for a long time mm -hmm. and i did really love my mythology classes and i really love i didn't love history but that's because mostly the teachers i had weren't great and they were very like dates oriented and date memorization oh, that's the worst. versus the really his like interesting stories of history yes so this is actually something that i might go grab on my pc just to like wander around and be like hey remind me remind me about ancient greece please because at one point this was interesting to me yeah no i i totally agree with you because i've often thought about history class and how i wish i could i thought about school in general and how i wish i could go back because back then you're a teenager you're kind of dumb you don't really have a grasp of the world and the thought that you get to go to a place and learn and educate yourself on things you know, for air quotes free, yeah. is a very exciting and very cool thing. And I wish I retained more of that knowledge because once you become an adult, you lose it. I mean, at least I did. And Unless you keep practicing it. Yeah, right. That's just it. And I think that is just so I don't know. I wish I could go back is what I'm saying. And actually, like, I wish I could do that. Appreciate today. it more. Yeah. yeah. Look, that's actually so it's funny that you say that because I've, you know, again, over the past few years been doing that, too. And I've been trying to more I, I just feel like even though I had almost no friends in high school and that's not like a pity party. So don't, again, I don't care. Like I didn't care that I had no friends, but it was just the reality of the situation. <laughs> um, didn't have a lot of friends was, but like I had so much in my life. I was like, I was in theater and I loved going, I had theater class like every day. Uh, it wasn't class. It was like seventh period or whatever. Mm -hmm. The extra extra. I had band for a while. So I, again, that's why I'm trying to relearn the flute now. And I'm like, that was a part of my life and it was interesting. And why did I stop it? Cause I was a fucking asshole teenager yeah. who just was like me. Uh, and then I was really into photography and like, yes. what happened to that? I was really into writing. I was in AP literature. I was doing all these things. Like there was just so many things that I was doing. I feel like I was probably a much more interesting person. There was just no one around to appreciate it. Being an adult <laughs> saps the soul of your body. That's just, you know, I mean, being an adult, cause you're like, well, I have to work. I have to pay bills. <laughs> and so if I'm not working, I am, I don't know what I'm doing. And, um, so yeah, anyways, I just thought that was interesting. And I did play games, but games are, were not as much of my life as they are. Or actually at this point now, I feel like at 35, I, I'm cranking back that way. Mm-hmm. Where I'm still gaming, but I'm not gaming as much as I did in my 20s. In my 20s, it was games were my entire life. I had literally almost no other hobbies. I wasn't reading anymore. I wasn't doing anything. I was just coming home and playing Yeah. until I went to sleep. Well, also back then, here we go. We're going down a, 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 a tributary. Why here. not? Why not? Let's, let's do it. Strap in, ladies and gentlemen. But back then, too, you know, I think for me, going off of that, it was more of I could just go home and play games and just enjoy them for what they were you know in the sense of it wasn't like okay so what developer is this what did they make what's their best their history what have they done recently okay what's the publisher and it, it's you were able to just kind of sit down and play them and not have to always play things with a critical eye and not always think about the whole industry is that you, you probably understand totally what i'm does. saying here. yeah i okay. mean that's part of why i left ign when i did um it's why sometimes you get burned out even doing the podcast yeah like, because you feel like you're a little bit on a hamster wheel and you need to be playing the next best thing because you need to be able to talk about it. But then when you're playing the thing, you're not really enjoying it as much as you would if you were a regular person because you have all these things on your mind about it. And for me, a lot of the time, it's not fun and I don't like it about myself, but it's what's happening is when you're like, how much longer is this? That's why I now I'm yeah. like, is this short? Is this a short game? Because I thank God it's like something I feel like I can accomplish. Um, because lately it's just felt like there was, especially the past couple of years, everything is bigger and bigger and bigger. And you just feel like you are drowning in a way. Like you, there's just no way to get out from under it mm -mm. unless, unless you become okay with the fact that you're just not, you're not going to finish almost all of it. Yeah. And I'm somebody who doesn't like not finishing, but I've become more comfortable with it as I've gotten older because you just have to. Oh, you have to, especially doing what we do. I mean, right now I feel like we're kind of in a lull because things are just yes. getting delayed and pushed back, which has been honestly really good timing. If you go back to the several episodes of what's good, I mean, I don't think any one of us has really been playing. I mean, granted, I played Yakuza for a hot minute there for a bit. Oh, yeah. You but, probably were the rabbit hole. But if you think about it, though, like, those are older games that really aren't that relevant to today, besides the fact that we have Yakuza like a dragon coming out. So that was the first time in a long time I feel like I was able 
well, you know, in, in my career to just stop and play games that probably really didn't matter. But I was able to do it. Yeah. Because of everything going on. And it was a really awesome kind of like nostalgic feeling we're able just to go back and enjoy games and play them don't get me wrong i still enjoy games now like i don't want to yeah i don't want to like make it seem like it's not you're just wearing a different color pair of glasses yeah 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 that's i mean that's what we do and that's you know what we signed up for and obviously we love what we do but it was kind of nice to just sit back and like feel like you're a little kid again you know playing games up until like the wee hours of the morning not caring what timeline you're on or like what year it is but it is funny how we rubber band back because i think that's part of the reason why i've been studying japanese for you know it's been like a year now because i i am craving like that stimulation in my brain from mm-hmm. like a different part of it it's like okay yeah. i, I want to like learn stuff i want to learn wanna... something yeah i know yeah. god it's like our 16 year old fucking cons- novelty right yeah. i know can see us now like oh, i'm gonna stop playing video games for a bit so i can learn stuff so get the yeah. fuck out of here you old people it's it's i mean i am definitely <laughs> feeling that for sure and I think at this point in time it's been tough for me because I don't I don't really want to sit down and play anything right now because for the most part I find a lot of game topics they aren't relaxing most of them Mm -hmm. right like most of them are very intense situations most of them something bad is almost inevitably happening so that's why I'm like do I I don't I don't know that something some place I care to go right now uh, that's why I'm watching Gilmore Girls for the millionth fucking time. <laughs> that's always your go-to. I love it. It is. It's it's interesting because like I don't consider myself an anxious person. I don't really suffer with like anxiety attacks or anything like that. But at the same time, I don't. I will have tendencies that are like, well, I'll go to comfort food because I know exactly what's going to happen in this, mm-hmm. and there's nothing in here to surprise me, and therefore I can deal with literally all of the plots and twists and turns that are coming my way because yeah. I know what they are. And I've seen this too many times um, versus like, OK, even the, even some shows on Netflix that I know that I liked the first season of and they have a new season now. I'm like, eh, like, do I even want to watch that? I don't know. I don't know that I do right? because I don't because it's hard to anticipate. And you're like, what am I going to be hit with? There was um, I finished reading this book and then I finished watching. Oh, shit. What was the name? Mindy Kaling's new show on Netflix. Uh, I would help you out here, but you know, I know, I know, I know that I, people. If you know what I'm talking about, you know it's a really What's great name? series on Netflix. Her name, the the writer is Mindy Kaling. I could, yeah, just do Mindy Kaling. I got you, Netflix. girl. Netflix. Never have I ever. It's called Never Have oh, I Ever. Yeah. Um, and if you don't know who Mindy Kaling is, I feel sorry for you. She's amazing, but she was on The Office. She's a, a very talented comic writer, and she also had another show that I've already. My brain doesn't work right now. It's fine. <laughs> Um, but so I read the, finished reading this really sad book, was crying, sobbing. Aww. Then I finished watching Never Have I Ever, sobbing, crying. And I was just like, okay, I, <laughs> I don't need this right now. I don't need this. I, I mean, it was therapeutic in a way, sure. but at the same time, I'm like, this is part of why I am like, I'm going to watch Gilmore Girls again because I know that this show only makes me laugh at this point because mm-hmm. the, the sad points I know so much that I'm like, it's like water off a duck's back. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, that's just it. Right now, these are really weird times, and they're very stressful times. And, like, we always preach it's okay to not be okay. And so I think, I mean, I can't speak for everyone, but I know me and my close circle of friends, which is, like, you know, Andrea and Steimer, <laughs> you know, it's taken a toll on our mental health. And you got to do what you got to do to get by right now, you know, because the world doesn't stop. Like, we still all have to work, and we have to do X, Y, Z. We have obligations to fulfill and you have to make sure that you're in a safe, a safe and, you know, healthy mindset if you want to keep trucking and just like, yeah, I guess the lesson of all this is do what you got to do to make yourself feel like able-bodied and just don't stress about, don't try to keep up with everything. I think that's kind of the, that's been the kind of the hard lesson for me to learn. It's just go with the flow. If I don't feel like doing something that isn't critical, I'm going to take a step back and let my mind reset because these are just crazy weird times. Yeah, there's definitely that, but there's also, I mean, for me, I was talking to somebody else about this today because they were like, oh, wow, you're like really motivating me because for the most part, I've kept, I've done some sort of working out this entire time. Mm -hmm. Um, So I will say, I don't, you shouldn't necessarily always be reliant on motivation, giving you guidance on where to go or what to do, Mm -hmm. because I'm definitely not motivated all the time to work out, but I go do it. Like there are some days where I'm like, (laughs) meh. I just want to lay in bed for all day. 
but I'll just lift myself up and go do something. Yeah. So like, I, you don't need to push yourself too hard, I would say, but like, make sure you're getting up and you're doing, if you're going for a walk or I don't know if you got kids, lift them up, like use them as your weight, like do, <laughs> you know, do whatever you can to just get moving a little bit because it helps so much. I can't even imagine how my mental health would be right now if I had not been working out this time. Yeah. Everyone has that thing that yeah. helps you get so, like, through. Do, yeah, so do the things that help you, that make you feel good. But yeah, you know? there's no right or wrong answer to all of this, but just no. do what you got to do. Take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. That's ah, all That's all hey. we're trying to say. <laughs> um, okay, so let's go back to Ubisoft and Assassin's Creed. Let's like rail this yes. train. Oh, yeah. Wait, that sounds bad. Don't rail the train. Let's uh, get that train back on rails. I'm just going to gently lift the train up and place it back onto the tracks. There we go. And now we're going to start chugga 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 chugging. Okay. Choo-choo. Love you. The last piece of news about AC and Ubisoft that I want, well, this is just Ubisoft specifically, is that they shared that 11 of their titles have sold over 10 million units. One Christine Zimmer, that, that has been wow. Assassin's Creed Unity, Assassin's Creed Origins, Tom Clancy's The Division, The Division 2, Far Cry 4, Far Cry 5, Ghost Recon Wildlands, Rainbow Six Siege, Watch Dogs, and Watch Dogs 2. I'm surprised they mentioned Unity. <laughs> I know, me too. I was like, well, you know, that was that took everyone by surprise. Everyone had faith back then. And, you know, Oops. <laughs> Oops. So good job, Ubisoft. Of course, a lot of their numbers were just down overall because they delayed Gods and Monsters, Legion, and uh, oh, wow, Rainbow Six. Oh, I forgot Six. about that game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Rainbow Six Quarantine. So overall, like, their numbers ain't looking good, but that's what they expected. But hey, at least small victories. You sold a lot of millions of games. Good job. Good job. Good job. Okay, and then finally, to wrap it up, EVO Online's 2020 lineup has been revealed in LOLOL. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is missing from the lineup, probably because playing it online isn't the best experience. But EVO Online 2020 will feature Dragon Ball Fighter Z, Tekken 7, Street Fighter V, Champion Edition, MK11, Killer Instinct, and more. The tournament right. will run on the weekends from July 4th to August 2nd. And it is just hilarious how bad Smash is online. Like it's a- I mean, it's not surprising. It's a Nintendo game. And, like, you look at Animal Crossing, even, and trying to get to someone's island. Or, yeah, so, like, I... It's sad, obviously, for that community. Because yes. being, like, the one that's left out because the company that made the game is just not known for its online infrastructure has to suck. Yeah, that's a bummer deal. But my favorite game to watch at that conference, but to last, maybe next year. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 Remake will be released for PS4, Xbox One, and PC via the Epic Game Store on September 4th, 2020, with pre-orders offering fans early access to a demo of the iconic warehouse level. Sam, are you excited about this? No, okay. but I've never played any of the Tony Hawk games. Yeah, I haven't played them either. Jason played a lot as a kid, and so he's really excited, and this does feature... I think it's split screen and online co-op. And it does look like a fun game to have a few drinks and do some... All the oops is that no that's basketball to do so all what are, I don't know what those, oh, I don't I don't know you asking I don't know skateboarding terms I'm, I would I break my neck on one of those things I can't I can't even stand on one but it does look like a fun game to kind of just have some drinks and button mash but we'll see and finally according to the Microsoft Store Mafia Definitive Edition and Mafia Two Definitive Edition will be released on August twenty eighth and May nineteenth respectively announcement is coming on may 19th and the story for the original mafia also promises this game will be faithfully recreated with expanded story gameplay and original score this is the mafia remembered and so much more Woo. um so this is this was kind of fun this took me back so back in 2010 when i was just a mere blogger on the ign blogs the you were really old then huh Oh, yeah. I ha- yeah, I see what you did there. You're making fun of my old person voice. I was like, what? No, yeah. I was 10 years younger, Simon. So math is hard. Let's have I know. It. That's why I'm like, were you Benjamin buttoning it? What you- <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I guess I would have. I should use a baby voice for that. Anyway, um, some friends and I made the trip from Florida up to Boston to attend the very first PAX East. And when we were there, Greg and Damon of IGN. I mean, Greg obviously is no longer there, but Damon's there. They held a community event where they booked us all Mafia 2 appointments, and we got to play the game and then share our experiences on IGN.com. And at the time, it was a really big deal because we were, like, in the cover photo on the website, and we all got to write a couple blogs about it. And I remember at that point in time, it was still possible to get – was that game? PlayStation 2, I believe. PlayStation 2 games um, in stores. And I remember I went to – my local Fred Meyer to get a used copy of a PlayStation 3, sorry. Fred Meyer! Oh, wait, 
it mafia the first mafia hold on hold on hold on hold on i'm trying to see what this game what platforms this released on playstation 2 okay yeah i got to go to a fred meyer and they still sold ps2 games and i got a used copy of mafia so i played it so i could understand what mafia 2 was like because it was gonna be my big chance to be all cool you know because i was gonna be on ign.com anyway Does fred meyer still exists yeah great it's everywhere that makes me happy i know it's what's on your list today you'll find it at fred meyer oh god yeah, so, anywho, just reading the story kind of was a fun little throwback of, I remember that, that, and that was 10 years ago, holy shit. And the article is still up, actually, which is kind of fun. Yeah, I went through some old papers, because I was cleaning my stuff out, because I'm getting ready to move, and I found some old stuff from, like, yeah, like, 2014, I was like, man, yeah. a long time ago. Oh, I know, it's weird, right? It does, it, yeah, because it, it doesn't see, I mean, it does and it doesn't. Right. I don't know. It's a strange. Time's a weird thing. It's the cliche thing of it feels like it was a long time ago, but I don't know. Anyway, that was a throwback because holy hell, I was barely 21 at that point, and that's just a weird thought. I was barely able to drink. I, you know what I mean? It's like when you put things yeah. in that perspective. Could I consume whiskey legally? Yes, but barely. There you go. All right, Simmer. I think we have covered all of the video game news, unless something has broke. In the past hour and a half. In which case, you'll cover it on Monday's show with Andrea and What's Good Games. Oh, live. that was a, that was a good little thank you, Sam. That was a good promotion. See, this this is one of the reasons why you got to keep you around. You're blunt and you tell you tell the truth how it is, and you're good at these little segues, these little promotions. I do what I can. You do what you can, baby girl. All right. Well, Sam, as always, it's always been a it's always fun doing the Steinbacher shows. I love our little tangents we go down and our little life lessons we try to bestow upon people try to impart wisdom upon the masses but not really i don't yeah no yeah. don't don't yeah do you is the, is the end of my you do you we are not certified we, we we are just talking from life experience so please don't Correct. take our word as gospel please don't oh my god for the love of god do not do yeah. that no, okay yeah. so andrew and i will be back on monday with a new episode of what's good games live as timer mentioned you can watch that on twitch.tv slash what's good games at 11 a.m pacific we will be there talking about the latest and the greatest in gaming until then Take care of yourself. Have a great weekend. Goodbye.